Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotac and the iPhone 16 Pro Max has been out for about a month at this point. A little bit over that and I can't believe it's already been that long. I've been using it full time as my main device using the black titanium version and I've actually been enjoying it but I've not found a ton of differences. So I thought we'd talk about how it's held up as far as durability, whether or not I use camera capture and much more. Now the overall design is very familiar and feels less special this year as it's something we've kind of had since the iPhone 12. We have the squared off design, no issues there with it, it's easy to hold on to, they curved the edges last year and made it titanium, and it's just a repeat of that. It's not a bad phone, it just doesn't feel really any different if you've been using an iPhone 12. Maybe a little less sharp as far as the overall edges, but in general, it feels very familiar. So this is something I would like to see redesigned, and that's basically just because, well, it feels like it's the same thing, minus a couple different changes. When it comes to the overall durability and scratches, well, this one has actually held up much better than the previous generations. In fact, I don't have a single scratch on it. Even in this bright sunlight, I don't see any micro scratches or anything like that. That's much better compared to what we had last year at the same time where I had little scratches here and I even had dings on the frame. However, I haven't dropped this one at all. It's held up really well. I've set it down on different surfaces, just maybe like this table here, set it down, but I don't typically put it face down and unless it's on my table where I'm recording, where I know it's completely clean and not going to scratch the display. So that's great news. I haven't had the coating chip off or anything like that, and it's held up incredibly well. Around the camera lenses, the same thing is true. While we have some dust there, I don't have a single scratch on the camera lens, and this has been set down on tile, and I don't see any issues here right around the camera lens where sometimes it would wear off on the previous generations. Maybe it will over time, but without using a case and screen protector, it's holding up better than I've seen in quite a few years. So I'm happy to report that. I'm basically treating it the same way as I do all of my phones that I've had throughout the years and not really doing anything special. It goes in my pocket while I'm not using it or on a table if I'm at home or recording videos or things like that. So nothing really special there and it's really holding up quite well. As far as the display goes, some people have complained that it's a bit darker. I just find that I have to turn up the brightness level a little bit more often. So typically I'll have to bring this up a little more. Maybe they've changed something with the overall sensor algorithm, but the display itself goes just as bright as it did before. It also goes down to one nit of brightness. So I can't really see it outside with one nit of brightness, but if you're someone that uses it in the dark a lot, that may be very helpful. However, I find it to be too dim for most situations, unless you're in a very dark room. So I just turn it up a bit, but it's nice that it's there and I really haven't had any issues as far as that goes. So display wise, we're outside now. It's nice and bright. I have no problem seeing it in sunlight. In fact, there's sunlight shining in from the left side right here and I can see it just fine. When it comes to battery life, it's a little bit hit or miss depending on which version you're running. I've been running betas, of course, as I typically do, and I've been running public versions as well. When it initially launched, we were easily getting through the day. I think most people were pretty happy with the 16 Pro and 16 Pro Max, and I was getting through the day no problem. However, once iOS 18.0.1 released, well, that became a bit of a problem. Many people have experienced issues with it after about the first week, battery seemed to get worse. The first week it was the same or better. So I'm not sure what happened there, but currently with betas, I'm not getting through the day with the current one. I'm at 29 cycles with 100% battery capacity, and you can see coconut battery here. This gives you more in-depth detail. It's a Mac app that's free that you can download outside the app store and then connect your phone and check it out. But if we take a look at the last few days, yesterday, for example, I only had three hours and 48 minutes of screen active time, seven hours and 44 minutes of screen idle time. This is pretty terrible given that it was almost 100% battery use, and then the day before, four hours and 53 minutes. That's because I was running iOS 18.2 beta one. If we look back a few days, you'll see where I've used less power, maybe for a couple hours, but it was getting me through the day. So now it's gotten worse, but again, that's a beta. But again, most people are complaining that iOS 18.0.1 is causing issues and hopefully 18.1 solves that as many people are waiting for that. And it seems like it does, but we have to wait for Apple to release it. And you may have already had it by the time you're watching this video. Now, one of the new features is the new camera capture. This button is something that I find that I barely use. I basically use it to open the camera and then record a video or take a photo. 
I don't really use it to go through the different menus here. I find that to be very unintuitive. It's much faster for me just to tap on the screen. You can slide through and that's not an issue necessarily, but double tapping to switch through different modes, I really find isn't very useful for me. I do like the styles though, where you can go in and maybe select a style. We'll go in and edit. Then you can go and edit a photo and then select whatever style you'd like, bringing back maybe some more contrast or shadows or just making it look however you'd like. That feature I really like, but the camera capture I could do without. Some people will really love it. I find that when I'm trying to take a photo with it, it actually makes the phone shake a little bit more and I typically don't get exactly what I want by just tapping the button here. I can get a much better photo that way. So I'm not crazy about that overall camera capture and I think it's fine, but for me, so far, it's not anything I find that I use regularly. Regularly. However, maybe when they have the half press to focus shutter, it's something I'll use a little bit more, but currently in its current state, I don't use it. However, the photos and videos out of this camera are phenomenal. In fact, I'm recording this video again, just like I did with my initial review or unboxing and review I actually did with this particular camera. So you'll see I'm recording with it now. I'm using an iPhone 16 Pro Max. That's the Desert Titanium and I'm recording it. No issues. It works really well, no problems. And we're recording an HDR. So 4K 60 HDR, 4K 120. It looks phenomenal and it's definitely usable. The overall four mic array when doing different comparisons sounds pretty good. And because we have those different modes, we can switch between it makes it really nice to use. So if you go into a photo or go into a video rather, so within a video, if you're going to edit, you can go to the audio mix. And I really like that we have these options and then you can adjust it as you see fit. So I think it sounds pretty good overall. I love that I have this option, but I was surprised that it didn't sound as good as I had hoped in general. It's pretty good though. Most people won't notice a difference, but I'm actually using a professional mic as I prefer the sound of that. When it comes to using this day to day and the overall speed, well, this new chipset is definitely very fast. So if we go back here, we'll go back to the CPU settings, you'll see 7.45 gigabytes or eight gigs of Ram. And of course we have the new chipset in here, the a 18 pro. So it's super fast and I've really had no issues with it from time to time. I will see a stutter as it tries to ramp up pro motion since that goes up and down. Maybe you go to scroll in the app library, but again, that could be because I'm running betas, but doing everyday tasks, going into simple things such as podcasts or maybe opening music, listening to that, sending it to something else. It just seems to be a very good device overall. I've had no issues whatsoever with speed. It's plenty fast and I don't even think about it. And the same is true with the heat of the device. I really think they've fixed the thermal issues. Many people were having before where the back would just heat up too much. It seems like it stays nice and cool most of the time. And I've really had no issues with that whatsoever. I think the biggest issues I've had is with the software overall. iOS 18 has been very buggy. Initially, it seemed to be pretty good, but Apple has a lot to work on here with over 300 different features and changes. And that just makes it for a very challenging task to sort of get everything right. While we have things such as Apple intelligence that's coming out very soon, or it's out by the time you're watching this video, that's something they've been working very much on. And it's just taking a lot of resources. And I think their focus on getting bugs and things like that worked out has sort of fallen behind just a little bit. Hopefully they pick that back up get this sorted out and things become much more stable with battery life and more. I think they're well aware that battery life is poor for many people. iOS 18.1 hopefully will fix that, but Places like Mac rumors and nine to five Mac and other sources such as myself and other people online have said the same thing. So I think Apple's well aware that there's an issue from time to time and hopefully things improve. Now, if you're wondering if you should pick up an iPhone 16 pro max, well, if you have an iPhone 15 pro max and you're really on the fence about it, you may want to wait because it's not that big of an upgrade. Just using it day to day, you probably won't notice much of a difference other than a little bit extra battery life by a couple hours. Typically outside of the battery life, really everything else feels the same other than having the capture button or the camera capture. So, or camera control. So if you're using camera control and that's something that really interests you, or you want 4k 120 for the video, well, then you can actually upgrade and you'll be very happy with it. But if you don't care about those specific things, I don't think it will make much of a difference for you. So you may want to hold out. However, However, if you don't have an iPhone 15 pro or iPhone 16 series and you want Apple intelligence, it's definitely worth picking one of these up, maybe getting a discount at your carrier or somewhere else. I think it's a great phone, but again, it feels very familiar. That's a good thing and a bad thing as it's starting to feel a little old. And I think Apple will probably revamp that with the iPhone 17. 
And so as far as iPhone 16 Pro Max, I think it's a great phone. It's just not an exciting phone. If you're coming from an older phone, it will be a huge upgrade. But if you're coming from an iPhone 15 Pro Max, it feels very similar, more similar to maybe an S model year that they used to do in the past. That's not necessarily a bad thing as it's a refinement of the device, but it definitely doesn't feel like holding something new or that's something that's a little bit fresh. Despite it having a slightly larger display, I completely forgot about that as I don't even realize it. The bezel is actually have a little bit smaller bezel here, but that's really, again, not very noticeable even next to the iPhone 15 Pro Max. So again, I think it's a good device and I'll continue to use it regularly day to day and see how it goes from here on out with Apple intelligence and more. Hopefully it gets a lot better from here on out and things improve as far as stability with software. If you've picked up an iPhone 16 Pro Max or you're thinking about it, I'd love to hear your thoughts on it in the comments below. And of course, I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already, though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.